question now. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Once again, I, I can't see your comments. I guess God is breaking me of the need uh, for interaction before I do what he's told me to do. Um, but good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm glad you guys chose once again to share some time, spend some time with me. <laughs> and um, together we can kind of try to figure out what it is God wants to teach us. So today, our discussion is on prayer and praise, um, but I suggested it would probably answer the question or give you a response. I think the thing I posted was sometimes I get so tired, I just want to, right? And so um, I wanna explore prayer and praise individually and collectively, but I also want to explore um, and examine praise specifically. Okay, so Father God, we just ask that you would be in this space, which I know you already are, that you would lead, guide, and direct, that you will prepare hearts for um, ears that listen and, and a heart that understands, and prepare me so that I will only speak that which you have channeled through me to speak, which you have given me to speak, which you have assigned me to speak for the elevation of us all me and anybody else who is listening. So we praise you, we honor you, we worship you. You are our everything. You are our beginning and you are our end. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your positioning. And mostly we thank you for the passion that you have put in us to love you. In the, name of, in the name of Jesus, I pray and stand in agreement. Amen. Amen. So today I said we wanted to talk about prayer and praise. And then I'm going to pose a, a, one of the answers to that. To the, to the sometimes I get so tired, I just want to question. A lot of times when we are um, starting in this relationship, one of the things that we are taught is most important is prayer. You have to have a prayer life. Um, that's how you communicate with God. You communicate with God through prayer. And, and I get that. I believe that. I understand that. But I also know it takes more than prayer, often, to be positioned, to come up out of situations, right? To see a possibility. Prayer is what we do um, when we are challenged, right? When we're feeling weak, when the world is coming against us, when we feel like uh, there were some promises that God gave us that haven't been kept, when we feel like our life is gone awry, you know, when when everything we touch is turning to mess in our eyes, you know, and there's there's nothing productive. And sometimes we pray just because we're spoiled and there's just that one thing, hmm, thank you, Holy Spirit, that has not come to fruition that we feel like we should have got. So we we blow up first, we have a meltdown, and then our next position, our next posture is usually prayer. But I'm, kind of, I'm here to submit to you today that there is um, a greater revelation, a greater elevation, and a greater return on praise. Now don't turn me off right away. Listen to what the Lord told me to share with you. So the greatest example I can give, let me, let me start with my scripture and then I'll give you the example of, of why we're going here. There are several scriptures about it, but the primary scripture is in everything, it's Philippians 4 and 6, in everything, by prayer and supplication, which is pleading for help, begging for help, saying, please, 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 right? And with thanksgiving, right? Let your requests be made known to God. So he didn't say, the scripture does not say by prayer, and pleading alone. But no, it says with thanksgiving, right? So, so come to me in a thankful state. Even though you're downtrodden, come to me in a, in a state of praise. When you're praying with me, when you're praying to me, pray with me centered in praise. 
But we don't do that. We go to him pitiful. We go to him pitiful and crying. And it's good to cry. It's good to cleanse. It's, it's absolutely good to do that. But it's also very much worthwhile to praise our way through our prayers. Amen. Prayer is blended with thanksgiving. It is, if we do it properly. Prayer and thanksgiving or praise or whatever you want to call it go hand in hand. Let's look at uh, David sometime. Well, let me let me do this. So what people will say is people, have, I don't know if you heard, people have said, I've been praying and praying and nothing is happening. And, and they come and said, maybe if you pray for me, da 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 And, and, I, and I, I would like to think, right? That the prayers of a righteous avail of much. So a lot of us can pray for people and bring forth things. But what I do know, whether I like to know it or not, is that our prayers avail of much if we do it properly. If we elevate from pitiful praying to a level of praise and prayer, more things will be rendered unto us. Okay? Prayer will break strongholds. Absolutely. Prayer will break strongholds because prayer is a petition. We're asking to receive, right? So prayer will break strongholds. But praise, praise is something we give. <laughs> praise is something we give. And when it's attached to prayer, it begins to work that which we've been praying for. Hear me when I say this. So, so prayer, our position of prayer is to receive and to position God, right? We're pleading for help. We're saying, I need you. I need you. And I need you now. I need you to work over here. I need you to work this family situation. I need you to work this relationship. You told me I can't leave. So please work it out. I need you to work this financial situation. I need you to work this job. You told me it was mine, but it don't look like I'm going to get it. Lord, what's going on? You, you let me get this house now. I can't afford this. I can't afford that. What's going on? Where is, where is the husband you promised me? Where is the wife you promised me? Where is the career you promised me? Where, 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 what, 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 how, 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 help me. And that's what we should be doing. Because he's the giver of everything, right? If that's your daddy, you go to your daddy and you say what you need. But I would suggest to you that prayer without praise is not as powerful at delivering what we've asked for as we kind of have been thinking and acting like it is. We're talking about prayer blended with thanksgiving when we talk about prayer and place together. We're talking about prayer breaking strongholds and pray, praise coming in and working wonders and delivering us from those strongholds into victory. So not just deliverance, but delivering you into victory. You know, I love David. I uh, when I when I when I pray a lot of times, I look at biblical characters, and I pray for the blessings that God gave them. Right. So God had a heart for David, and early years, years, years ago, I used to pray, oh, to have the favor of David, to have to have God cherish my, you know, have a heart for me like He had for David, because David did some stuff. David did a lot of stuff. <laughs> He made a whole lot of mistakes that would have cost him his life normally. But there was one thing that he also did that covered him and that put him in a position with God. David was a man after God's own heart. It said it in, it said it in the world. He was a man. He traced God. And we talk about tracking and tracing in our ministry all the time. He traced God and he tracked God and he chased him. He said, I know what I did, but I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm, you're not leaving me behind. I am not going to let you leave me behind because I know you're everything to me. I know you're my deliverer. Hallelujah. I know that you're my protector. I know that you're my provider. No matter what I do, I know that you hold all power and authority in your hand. I know you are the great I am. So I'm not getting out of my position of praise. I can do wrong on the left, but I'm going to praise you on the right. And that's what David was good at. 
That's why he published the Psalms. The Psalms are a book of praise. He understood how to praise God, even in the midst of his mess. His secret was he committed many mistakes that would have cost him his life, but he was always a conqueror. And we want to say, why? Why was he conqueror? Why did God always give him the victory? He chastised him. He, he let him be punished sometime. He took his first son. But there were so many other victories that he gave him. So why? Because he knew how to connect with God through prayers. He warmed God's heart. Right? He knew the difference between people who knew how to both shower God with praise and prayer. That's the difference. When you know how to shower God with prayer, because you, you have to humble yourself in prayer. Right. But you also have to acknowledge your position and your standing in praise. You petition in prayer. You position in praise. Oh, Lord Jesus. So I'm asking for something in prayer. And I'm telling you why I know you can give it to me in my praise. And they are partners. So we need to quit valuing one over the other. I've heard of prayer warriors. I don't think I've ever heard of a praise warrior. I want me some praise warriors around me to teach me how to praise, to teach me how to lift up my voice in honor to my God. Yes, I need prayer. Yes, I need to know how to pray. But without praise, my prayers turn out to be me crying, my nose running, me saying, oh, woe is me. Why are you doing me like this? You know you said this. You know you said that. Please, 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 please. But my praise takes me to a place where the pity I have for myself evaporates. Because I'm too busy being happy that I am in a position to have an open ear. Oh, mm, my God, my God. Have an open ear for my voice to be lifted as a melody, for my voice to be lifted in honor, and not only lifted in honor, but appreciated by my daddy. So again, prayer, I'm talking about prayer being to receive, to petition, to petition, I'm sorry, and praise being to give. And without that balance, we're just a bunch of beggars always asking for help when we yet have not acknowledged who we're asking for that help from. Amen. So David is really a, a, just, a, just a, a, a really strong example of not just the how to get stuff from God, but how to get with God, how to connect with God. So that the, the, I think I wrote down, I just, sometimes I get so tired, I just want to, sometimes we want to die. Sometimes we want to scream. Sometimes we want to break some things. Sometimes we want to just disappear. Sometimes we want to hurt ourselves. There's a whole lot of things that go after that too. But I'm going to suggest to you today that when you get that tired, that you go into a praise. Pick a song that can inspire you. Pick a song that can lift you up. Pick a song that makes you shake. Because well, a lot of times, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. A lot of times, well, when I when I'm doing something, when I'm a little uh, down, I don't. Oh, I can't always just go into praise. I would love it if I could. A lot of times I can, but I can't always do that. But what I find is that when I get a song, I was just listening to um, "The Lord Is My Light and Salvation," right? And 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 so when I'm listening to that, I'm in so empowered. Oh my God that immediately I go into praise. So, so, so I'm listening to that, I'm worshiping, I'm crying, I'm thanking, and I go into praise. You can only help but go into praise when you position your heart to be touched of God. God can't touch you and you don't praise. And if he's doing that, something's wrong. If you see him moving, or you feel him moving in your spirit and you can't get up and praise, then your prayer is not balanced with your praise. 
And I submit to you that that might be the reason that some of us aren't really getting um, our promises through, you know, the promises that he has, has said, some of our prophetic renderings. Praise is a sacrifice. Amen. Prayer is a tool. Praise is a sacrifice. Praise is saying, you are bigger than me. You are more powerful than me. You have all the answers that I don't have. And it is you who I humbly bow and submit myself to. And I am so happy and so full because you received me as your own. So praise is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that's pleasing to God's sent. Not that he doesn't honor our prayer. Not that he doesn't love us when we pray. I'm not saying that. Don't get it twisted and don't twist what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that praise is a, a nice, a sweet aroma. Right? It's a, it's, you know what? It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice because you have to humble yourself to praise God. Right? You have to humble yourself to praise God. And you also have to know who he is. You can pray to God without knowing who you're praying to. You can't praise. You can't praise. You can't get on a real praise. You can't, oh, hold on, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can't get a real praise going if you don't know who you're praising. So you have to humble yourself and ask him to show you who, you, who you're serving. And I guarantee you'll be a, you'll have a praise on your spirit, a praise. You'll just be walking down the street and a praise will hit you. It's almost like when um, people that are, are gifted, when prophets, a lot of times, some prophets, when they're praying for you and you lay hands on and they you faint. It's the power of that connection that's knocking you out. <laughs> that's blessing you. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The power of that. So the power that God has given that individual. And when they, they put their hands on you and they, they pass it through you, it's not the passing through that knocks you out. It's the power of what passed through. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord. It's the power of what passed through that makes you yield and fall and fail. Right? Amen. So praise gives us room for God's power to be displayed. And not only in our lives, but in other folks' lives. God will tell me, I'm going to give this to you, and I'm going to give this to the person you pray for. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why a lot of times when you're in, the, in ministry or you're under some umbrella or you're learning from some person, as they go, often you go if you're listening. And you're kind of being obedient to what they're saying. And you're entrusting them. Right? You're honoring what God is putting in them to share with you. Because again, praise gives room for God's power to be displayed in our lives. God shakes up things through praise. Yep. He shakes up things through our praise. He says, oh, that's out of order over there. Let me fix that. Because I can do it. I am. I am. I can do it. And you know I can do it. So watch me do it. Praise can cause God to have our whole heart. To acknowledge the power of his mere presence in our lives and over our lives. Pleases him tremendously. You can get to the point where you pray so much. There's some things you don't even have to ask about because God anticipates that need and you're waiting patiently and boom, it's there. You can get to the place where you're praising so much, you pray for 10 and you get 50. You pray for two and you get 10. You pray for a job offer, you get three. You pray for peace and you get peace that surpasses all understanding. So the voice of God is heard clearly when we go into a real praise. And how do I know that? I know that because it is in my, my praises where God gives me my direction 
and where he tells me what to share. A lot of times when I'm praising and I sit down, my mind has not even come back, right? I'm still in praise mode. And so when I get through praising, I just, I just, I just talk. Because in my praise, unbeknownst to me, he has filled my belly with gifts to share. So there's a lot going on when we praise. And we, we have to really take time to understand that. Uh, praise is a way to gain access to the presence of God. Psalm 16 and 11 will show you that and tell you that. The deeper you are in praise, uh, the deeper revelatory power and authority you receive. Again, the deeper you are in praise, the deeper the revelatory power and authority you will receive. Now, prayer, prayer is, prayer is okay. You know, God talks to us in prayer too. But again, hear what I just said. The deeper, mm, bless your name, bless your name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The deeper you go in praise, the more revelation of who God is for real, for real, for real, that you're going to receive. And we're not going to try to talk about this all today. It's just been on my heart. There's some things, you know, God is so great. So there's some things that as I was coming up in ministry on my own, not with my family, but on my own, that I would think. And, and you know, everybody would say, oh, yeah, that's not the way it is. I remember sitting in church one time and we were talking about Peter, who is another person, another uh, Bible person that I love. I think he gets a raw deal. Peter was the one that recognized spirit. And if you don't recognize spirit, you're two-third naked in your relationship with God. So anyway, I was uh, being taught about Peter. And they were talking about um, Jesus turning water. Is that the one I was, uh, we were he was talking about Peter. I can't remember. But, but at any rate, I get these revelations. That was my point. And one of them, when they were talking about water into wine, I was like, he didn't turn that water into wine. Like we're, like we're hearing it. God was just talking to me. He didn't tell me. I was like, okay. He said, um, the, the water was polluted back then. So they put wine in it to kill the germs. And so I get a lot of things like that because I think I'm a really hard praiser. I have to really um, schedule my prayer life. I have to say, Nina, you haven't prayed in two days. You need to pray. Because I'm a walking prayer warrior. You know, I can be eating with you praying. Right. I get up in the morning and I'm in prayer. Uh, when I'm sleeping and I wake up during the night, I can stand up and sit up and pray. So I'm a, I'm a walking. God has allowed me. Uh, oh, Lord Jesus has allowed my my system, my body. To just embody prayer like I walk. I can walk as a prayer. Which is good and bad because it doesn't it, it doesn't work for my consistency in the formal matter. But at any rate, um, the deeper you are in praise, the deeper revelation you receive. And, and sometimes, you know, God would give me res revelations and I would, uh, I would say, man, that's crazy. Nobody else is really saying this. Maybe one or two people. You know, what's wrong with me? Why do I keep coming up with this weird stuff? Why do I keep letting my mind be attacked? And what God does is he brings me full circle. And one day I'll be talking about something or praying and he will just remind me, remember when you said this? And now I've shown you this. So that's the other thing praise does. Praise strengthen the faith, the belief, the love for, and the dedication to God. Because you're not asking for anything and it's not dependent on anything. Prayer, sometimes we can get a spot where we depend on the outcomes of prayer to decide whether we're gonna maintain that relationship and give it the proper attention that it needs, right? Prayer can adjust our attitude if we don't see results. But praise will not leave any doubt because you will, your spirit is just gonna respond to it. When you hit that floor, or run to that chair, or you having a good time, your spirit responds to it. So you know that it's something greater than you. And you know it's already been delivered unto you. Amen. 
Again, the deeper you are in praise, the deeper revelations you receive. So praise not only positions you better. I won't say that. Positions you greater, because I believe that, with God. Because it's a sweet scent that you will humble yourself and praise him. And that you understand who he is. So you're not just praying to somebody somebody told you to. You need to pray God. You got a Christian, you got to pray. You're Christian, you got to pray, 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 pray. You know, it's not something somebody told. It's something that ignited in you. Because you can't praise if you don't connect to the spirit. The spirit sometimes connects to you. And you just go in. You go. You just praise. You worship. You praise. You worship. You pray. So praise is not something that we're anticipating anything from. But it's an acknowledgement of God's power and his authority and his ability to do his thing in our lives and to do his things in those that we're praying for. And that's why it is so pleasing unto him. That's why he is convinced to do things he may not have already decided to do for you from your praise. Your praise inhabits blessings to God. And so he returns those blessings and favor to you. He dwells close to us when we praise. He lives in our praise. He inhabits the praises of the saints. Psalms 22 and 3 is right there in the word. Inhabits means to dwell in, to live in. So while he hears our prayers and petitions, and he listens to them and responds to them, he lives in, he dwells close to, he inhabits our praise. And he can't help but in that, but you know why? Because praise comes from acknowledgement of who God is. You know? So when you're when you're sitting here or you're sitting in church and, and something just hits you, there's no doubt but that he's inhabiting you. Because the first time I, I used to watch people do run around the church. And I don't think I said anything really, really badly, but I probably did say, oh man, here we go again. But the first time I was standing in the back of the church and I remember kicking my heels off and that's all I remember. And the next thing I know, people were, were, were holding on to me so that I would not fall. And I say that not to say, oh, how great I am at praise. I say that to say he must absolutely inhabit our praise because it's not something that I initiated. Prayer, I can initiate. Praise, I don't initiate that. My spirit is drawn to God to give up what is his and I go into praise. So I'm not going to keep you long today because I really want to stay here on this topic for a couple of uh, Sundays. But I want us to remember, let me give you a few takeaways I want us to chew on until next Sunday. He dwells close to us when we praise. He lives there. And he inhabits our praise. Our praise can function, come forth, because the Lord inhabits us, right? He, he interjects that and we praise, okay? The voice of God is heard clearly when we go into a real unfettered praise. And when I tell you that it's possible, when I tell you you can be getting ready to fall in the wall, you, you, when I tell you that you can go to a place well, you're thankful when you come back that people were there to hold you. Running around churches, do, doing all kinds of things that my proper civilized self wouldn't do. So the voice of God is heard clearly when we go into praise and we can gain access to God when we go into a presence, a position of praise in his presence. God shakes up things through praise. Praise can God, cause God to have our entire heart. Praise can give us room for God's power to be displayed. Praise is a sacrifice. And when God smells it, it's sweet to his nostrils. Amen. Praise, blended with prayer, can bring down that thing, can shake it loose, the thing you've been waiting on. And again, I'm not saying not to pray. I'm saying we just have to understand that prayer is a position of receiving. Prayer is a petition. You know, I remember when we were growing up, and this is not funny, but I'm just being transparent. I'm learning to be the more transparent, Nina. And I got about a minute left. We were growing up, and I used to say to kids, you beg so much, you make people hate you. 
<laughs> which is absolutely mean. <laughs> but there used to be kids in our grade school class that just big all the time. They heard something crinkle. They thought you had something they big. Big, 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 big. But they never came back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And said, thank you. They never came back and said, I was so hungry. I didn't have any money. They never came back. They never came back to give you anything. And I suggested our prayer, oh, our prayers position us to receive the position. But when we give praise, our thank you is embedded in our praise. So we can't do one without the other and say that we honor God. We can't do one without the other and expect God to position us where we need to go for him and for us. We cannot do one without the other and have the favor that David had on his life. So praise and prayer are partners. And they must be equally balanced in our lives. So next week, we'll talk a little bit about uh, more about this and uh, the impact that praise has on us while we're praising, how it changes things, how it scares uh, the enemy away, how it will, will bind and, and tear apart things, okay? So um, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Um, I hear the Lord is, 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 I don't know if there's somebody named Carrie on here, but I hear the Lord saying that your praise, your praise, your praise, your praise is where your, your power and your progression is hiding. Free yourself, go on and get your praise in and watch things turn around for you. Watch it, watch it turn around. So let's try to give him a sweet scented praise this week. Something that, that is sweet to his nostrils. The smell is so sweet that he can't help but say, okay, let me help your eye. Let me, let me pay attention to what you're saying. God inhabits our praise. So let's be purposely pointed toward praise. Amen. God bless you, everybody. God keep you and have a wonderfully blessed, wonderfully fruitful, and praise field day. Amen.